We are going to, uh, you're trying to turn it off? Let's see if you can do it. No, it doesn't work. The lights don't work. It's either on or off. It don't work. Let's see if it works here. I'm going to say lights low. Lights medium, lights off, nothing works. It's always on. All right. So, um, we are going to talk about classes with resources, trying to understand what does that mean, classes with resources. For that, I'm going to quickly go through a series of uh, slides that we did about dynamic memory allocation. Um, did I close it? Give me a second. So, um, let's uh, start with uh, the um, original thing that we had about dynamic memory allocation. We said dynamic memory allocation is when uh, you have the memory and you have the pointer inside your program and memory is outside. This is not dynamic. Um, is it showing anything? Okay, it's not. Let me see if I can. Is it better now? Yeah. Okay, so, so we said that when you don't have dynamic memory allocation, the data is inside your executable. When you have dynamic memory allocation, you have the pointer inside the executable, and the data you have, it's outside of the executable. That's what dynamic memory allocation was, okay? Now, this program contains all the resources within the program. So the first one at the top contains all the data within the executable. Therefore, when the executable is gone by operating system, the data for the array is gone too. But this one, because the resources of the program, which is the memory that it allocates, it's outside of the executable. When the executable is gone, the values remain over here as memory leak. How did we fix that? We deleted the memory when we got up. Remember that? That was the thing, okay? So remember what I just told you, okay? Next would be, We talked about memory allocation in many different ways. Let me just allocate the memory before. If we have allocated the memory before with an array and we delete it without square bracket, then uh, we're going to have memory leak because it's ju just going to delete the first one, which we do not like. These are just quick things about dynamic memory allocation because classes with resources is really tightly close to it. We want to actually understand it. The next thing I want to talk about is memory resizing, which is not important at the moment. We'll talk about it after. Um, uh, just quickly going through it about memory resizing. We're going to actually go through the codes and understand exactly how they work. But when you are doing memory resizing, what you need to do is, if you want to have the size bigger or smaller, what you need to do is to first allocate the amount of memory you require, either bigger or smaller, holding it uh, in some temporary pointer. Then you have to copy everything that you have from the old one to the new one. And then after doing that and, and getting all the copies, you can get rid of the old memory. Now that the old memory is gone, you need to make the pointer of the old memory to point to the newly allocated memory, which is actually temp. So to, cut, to actually point to the temp, and obviously we're going to update the size, but we're going to make actually the pointer that we have over here actually point to, the, to where the, the newly allocated memory is pointing, which essentially uh, makes the M data point to the new location, and we have a bigger memory now. So that was resizing the memory. We're going to go through the code and understand exactly how it works. But why? Uh, what are we doing today? So if I have over here, so I create a class name over here, and this in this, in this class name, I'm going to have uh, a data for the name. So the job of this class is just to hold the name. That's all, okay? So in here, I'm going to have character. That's the value of the name, and it's a pointer. It's going to be dynamic. I'm going to make sure it's null when it's created. 
following the rules. Unused pointers are always set to null. And then what we're going to do over here, create a constructor for it that is receiving a constant character pointer for the value of the name. And obviously, it's going to copy everything into it when it comes to point. Because it's dynamic, I'm going to have uh, a name created over here, uh, uh, a destructor created over here to actually uh, deallocate the memory. Uh, we have done all these things, and I'm going to have a display to show it. So, and the display, we set the standard uh, um, signature for a display is O stream. Obviously, it's in a header file, so STD, O stream reference um, the, uh, display to display the, the, the thing, receiving an STD O stream reference uh, C out reference, which is going to be by default. C out. That's the standard way to create a, a display. And I'm going to have include IO stream over here to make sure that those things actually mean something. So creating the, the code for these things is quite simple. So I'm going to go to, uh, let me just create the signatures for them first. So that's creating definition for name, for destructor, creating definition for destructor, for constructor, and for display. All right. Now I'm going to come back to name and start coding. So what do I have in my utils? What do I have in my utils? In my utils, I have SDR and SDR copy string comp. Perfect. That's more than enough. All right. So I'm going to include my utils not to include include utils because I don't want to include the, the, the string library. And I'm going to include uh, IO stream for the display. Obviously, I'm going to use namespace stds, uh, sorry, std. And for the name, First of all, I have to make sure that the name exists. Do I need to make sure that, do I need to make sure that the value over here is null? No, because I initialized it to null, so everything is good. All I need to do over here is to say if the value that I'm receiving actually exists, it does have something in it, whatever, we don't care, okay? If it's pointing to somewhere. It means there is a string. I don't need to care if it's empty or not. If it's empty, my name is going to be empty too. So if the value is not null, then I have to go SDR copy into, oh, um, sorry, first I have to allocate memory. So I have to say M value is set to new character SDR len of value. Obviously, I'll add one to it for the null pointer. And I'm going to say SDR copy into M value the value that is coming from outside, and I'm going to have my name created. Very simple dynamic memory allocation thingy. Are we good with this? OK. When I'm going to be out of this thing, I've got to make sure that I'm going to uh, delete the value. So I'm going to say delete m value to get rid of it. And my safe empty state is for value m value to be null. So if m value is not null, that's my safe empty state. I'm going to display what I have to display, which means the name is there and I want to display it. And display it as C out ref, showing the m value. And at the end, I'm going to return C out reference. And now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have a dynamic name. OK? I can create this name in my program. So I can say over here, name uh, n, and I can say, oh, n, and I can say n over here, uh, Fred Soleil, and I can say uh, I need to have uh, n cre uh, included, sorry, and using namespace s. DDS. Obviously, I don't need IO stream, but I'm just putting it for the heck of it. Uh, for, for NL, I need it. So I'm going to say n.display. 
and I'm going to go to new line. We know that it's going to uh, do the dynamic memory allocation and print Fred Soleil over there. Hopefully everything's good. And we are fine. Okay. Anybody wants me to walk through that? Yes? Okay. So how it happens when it actually runs, the constructor is, uh, uh, so let me put it like this, either doing it that way or put assignment, it's the same thing. Assignment at the moment of creation is a call to the constructor. So assignment at, the, at creation is one argument constructor. We know that. That's not assignment operator. That's one argument constructor. And it comes to that. And then it's going to go to one argument constructor. Therefore, value over here that is null initially becomes Fred Soleil. Then it says, is the value null? No, it's not because it's pointing to Fred Soleil. It's going to see what is the, si what is the size of Fred Soleil. It's going to find out the size, allocate that much memory, copy the memory into M value. So M value will hold the same thing as the value coming in. And then it comes to display. And in display, it's going to see that value is not empty. And because it's not empty, it's going to display it. Returning C out reference. So NL can grab it and print it. So it goes actually to new line. And then after that, when everything is done, because N is going out of scope, because N is going out of scope, the destructor is called, deleting the M value, and name is gone. Yes. Because one pointer. The slide that I just show, I have one array. So this is doing the loop for you. You see this square bracket? This means all the elements. OK. All right. All right. Are we good? Are we OK? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? Are we good? So what if I have, we have seen in our workshops and everything, I do this. Name X, and I'm going to say set to N. Right? Or I do something like this. Uh, Far dude. Solomon. Okay, whatever. Okay? And now I'm going to say, I'm going to say X dot display, right? Then I'm going to say, take a look at this. I'm going to say x is set to n, right? I'm going to say x dot display again. Let's walk through it and see what's going on. OK? So are we OK with this, with, with what I wrote? I have two things, Fred Soleil and Fardud Suleiman, and whatever who he is. And uh, we create those things, and I'm going to display the first one, display the second one. Then I'm going to say x will be set to n. So because assignment operator is not overloaded, it's going to blindly copy everything that is in n and put it in x, right? Then I'm going to display the x and see if everything's good. So if I compile and run this beautiful program of mine, These two, we know it gets created. Then uh, let me do it like this so we can actually see what are we doing. OK, so it actually prints that one, prints the other one, sets the x to n, no problem. They're of same types. Now it says x, and you see it's Fred Soleil, right? Right? And I continue my program. First destructor is called nice, right? Second destructor is called, whoops, crash. If I, let me stop and run the program again. This is what I get. And if I run this thing on Valgrind, you're going to see I'm going to have lots of memory leak at the end. What the heck just happened? Well, why? Let's see. So this is actually what happened. Take a look. 
take a look. So what I had at top, let's say this is Fred Soleil, and the bottom one is that Fardud Suleiman, whatever it was. So I have two classes, and they both have data, and they are pointing, right? But the only catch that we have over here that you have to pay attention closely is that the data of the class is not inside. It's outside of the class. These are dynamic. Please keep that in mind, OK? Now, what happens when I actually try to set one to another? So I'm setting B to A. You see that? What the compiler sees are these two boxes. Compiler is not aware of these two data, correct? So blindly copies everything from A to B. Therefore, M data's content, that is an address, will go to here. M size will go to here, right? So this is what happens. So now both classes are pointing to the same thing. This is lost. You are printing B. The display as, of B says, is M data null? No. It prints it. It looks everything's good. Everything is copied. It is not. You, this one is referring to the other one. Then what happens? The program finishes and it ends. These two objects go out of scope. So the first destructor is called destroying the memory that is pointing, correct? Now the destructor of second one wants to get called. What to delete? That's when it crashes. So it's not memory leak. It's bad copying. It's bad assignment. That's why classes with resources each class that has resources, it needs to follow three rules to be able to take care of scenarios like this. Rule number one, we know. Creating a destructor. We have done that. Rule number two is to overload the assignment between two classes with the same type. We have to overload it. They call that assignment copy assignment. What does it mean? It means I have to overload the assignment and take care of it because what the system is doing is not good. How do I, how should I do it so it doesn't fail on me? This is how I should do it. So when I have a class like this, when actually assignment wants to happen, the very first thing I need to do is to make sure that the one that is being assigned to doesn't have anything left. So first I have to get rid of the data of this one so I don't have memory leak. So number one, I have to wipe that out. Now it's gone. It, I'm ready to do the copying. Then what I need to do, so that is gone. I'm good. Then I have to measure the data of the other guy. See what it is. Create dynamic memory exactly to that size and make the data of the target to point to it. Now that the data is copied, one by one I have copy everything from the other one to the new one. Therefore, everything is copied from the other one to this one. After this is done, I update the size, and I have two copies. That's why assignment operator must be overloaded following these steps. Other, otherwise, you will not only have memory leak, but also have crash at the end. Worst case scenario, OK? So how do we do that? Let's do it. It's not actually that difficult. Everybody's looking at me as, as if I gave them news of somebody's dying. N nothing bad is happening. This is just. Uh, easy programming. Um, so, um, I think the other one, where's the other one? It's not there? Okay. So, simple. So, first of all, we know exactly what the thing is. It has to be uh, the operator assignment 
at right side, I have to receive something to copy, right? So that's the exact same type of this one, so it's a name reference. But I don't want to change it. I only want to copy it, so it's a const, and I'm going to say over here to copy from, right? Then, obviously, I have to return the reference of the current one so I can have cascading. So I can have A is equal to B is equal to C is equal to D is equal. I, if I want to be able to do that, I have to return this. So I have to say over here, this should return the name reference, the one that I'm copying. So that's it. That's what I need to, that's what I need to uh, create. So I will create it, no problem. So let's follow the steps. I'm going to put this slide back up. And I'm going to go back. Whoa. So we are at this stage, right? The very first thing that I'm going to do when B is equal to A is happening, which is here, when B is equal to A happening, which is here. So this is, so just to see what do we mean, this is actually A. I'm going to call it A. <laughs> okay, so we know that this is, in the other slide, A that we are copying from. All right? So, so I am copying from A that is here. So the very first thing, and B is this. So this one is the one that is copying happening to it. B is equal to A. It means the assignment belongs to B. Okay? And one news for you, assignment operator is one of the exceptions that you can never make it a helper. An assignment operator cannot be a non-member. Everything else can. You can have a plus as a non-member operator. You can have a plus equal as a non-member, as a standalone operator, as a helper. With assignments, you can. So the very first thing I need to do is to delete the current data, data which I will do. So delete the current data, which means I'm going to say, first thing I'm going to do is delete I don't need to say this. I am in there. You don't, you don't need to say, if I say, where are you? You're not going to say, I am in this class. You're going to say, I'm in class, right? You are in the class. You don't need to say this. So delete M value. So that is going to delete the value that I, that I am in right now, OK? And the next step is to allocate memory to the size of the other one, right? Now, my name doesn't have a size, so I have to measure its size. But that's no problem. So I'm going to say m value is set to new character strlen of a dot uh, m value plus 1. So I'm essentially saying get the size of the other one and copy it, which is that one, right? So that's going to take care of it. I don't have a size over there. It's just the name, so. You need to have a size if you have no method of measuring what the size is. If that was an array of integers, which I didn't know where the end is, in C strings, we have the standard of putting a null at the end. So we know where the end is. We can count and find out with Regular arrays and regular information, you don't know what the size is. If it's an array of integers, array of employees, array of students, is it 50, is it 5, is it 2? You don't know. That's why you have size. We don't have size over there. Anyways, so now I'm going to copy everything over here. So this copies everything seven times. I do not need to do that. Over there, SDR len will take care of it. SDR copy will take care of it. So I'm going to go SDR copy into m value, a dot m value. So copy everything from that one to this one. And now everything is copied. And when, it, when they go, this destructor, you don't need to see it now. That's when we need to do it after, not now. So this case is going to happen. So essentially, by doing something like this, obviously, I'm going to say return this at the end to be able to have multiple copies if I want to. And there you go. Now it's not going to crash anymore. Now if I run the program, what happens? So I'm going to first run it. So I'm going to first run it. And you will see that it runs. No crash. Everything works perfectly. 
Okay? Well, what happens behind the scene is that now you told the compiler, hey, don't do your assignment. I'll take care of assignment because this is a class, class with resource. A class with resource is a class that doesn't have its resources within its own scope. It's pointing outside. It, in our case, mostly is dynamic memory allocation. But in real life, it could be a file that you opened on a hard disk, a port that you are reading and writing on network, uh, a, a communication that you are doing with a web browser, or whatever. So you are opening and closing stuff, and those things are not within your class. That's when you take care of it like this. Anyway, so now uh, let's run it step by step. So as you see over here, so it displays the first one and the second one is, is this, they're displayed. Now it goes to assignment. The very first thing it does, it deletes Fardud Suleiman. That's going to go away. Now it measures what is the length of Fred Soleil and allocate exactly that much. Copy Fred Soleil to this one, and therefore copying is done. And then ta -ta -ta -ta, we're going to go like this. And what do we do? Uh, and it displays. And when the destructor is destroying it, each one, it, although their values are identical, but they are two different memory locations. The first one gets deleted perfectly, the second one gets deleted safely, and we are done. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Next thing. We have to always... Uh, be careful with users' mistakes and stupidity. When I say users, it means ourselves. <laughs> because we might do something like this. Take a look. Instead of doing Fardud Suleiman, I may do this. Actually, let, wait, wait, wait. Uh, A needs, I'll put zero, 01 needs copy assignment dot cpp. Okay, the next one, we may do this. What is x now? What is x now? What is x? No, what is x? x is a reference. 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 Reference of who? Reference of what? n. So we don't have two objects here. We have one name object called n with two handles, x and n, correct? And we forget about it. And then we say x is set to n. Compiler wouldn't know. Both sides of the assignment are the same object, but the compiler doesn't know. So what happens is that when we run this program, we're going to have a crash again. And we're going to say, what the heck? Like, like we just wrote this thing, and it looked perfect. So, so what happened? What, what's wrong with this? And in this case, it didn't crash. We're lucky. But if you go on Linux, it will crash. So, so what happened over here is this. So when you do assignment like this, what happens is that it comes in here because x and r are the same. It displays them both, which is perfectly good. Right? And then when it comes to, to assignment, it says delete m value. When it deletes, what does it delete? Fred Soleil. So it actually deletes what it wants to copy from because they are both the same. This and the next one are the same. Because they are the same, if they, it, now it wants to actually get the link, it's going to get the link of garbage, and then it's going to copy the garbage into the garbage and returns this, and then it's going to print the garbage for us. OK? So how do we prevent this? Yes? Not as a reference. We should check to see if we are copying from ourselves. How do we do that? We know that the address of the current object is within a pointer called this, correct? So I'm going to say, if my address is the same as the address of A, 
not do the copying. Other than that, we are the same. We are the copy of each other. Don't do anything. So I'm saying, look at my address. If it's not equal to the address of that one, it means we are different objects, but from same type, do all the copying or schmopping, whatever it is. If it is not, then return that. Are we good? Now, if I run this beautiful program of mine, three years later, you'll see that it will work. And it doesn't know that actually, all right? So it's all one class. It doesn't do anything. Are we OK with this? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? So now, let's say I want to actually display the, the, the name. I want to display the name. So in here, I'm going to say, uh, void, say hello. OK? And in here, because I don't follow my instructor's suggestions, I'm going to pass it by value. So I'm going to say over here, name, uh, n. And in here, I'm going to say, what do I say? I'm going to say, um, see out, hello, and end.display, and go to new line. Right? Uh, all right, so I'm going to change this. I'm going to say Fred Soleil. In here, I'm going to say, say hello to n, and n.display. Goodbye. OK? And if I run this program of mine, This is what happens. And this is what you see. What the devil happened? OK. So another problem. Abort, 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 abort. OK. So when a function is called, what the, how did we say a function is called? Remember, I said when a function is called, it is essentially the function is called as follows. When you are calling a function, and here you are saying, say hello, this is what's going to get called. It's going to call say hello, name n equals to n. That's how it's called. So when a function is called, the argument of the function receives the value you are passing to it, right? What is assignment at the moment of creation? Assignment at the moment of creation is? Assignment at the moment of, <laughs> it's funny. Assignment at creation is one argument constructor, right? It's one argument constructor. Therefore, this name N of mine will actually create a, 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 a class. It will create a copy of N, OK? When it creates a copy of N, what's going to happen? When it creates a copy of N, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to happen. When it creates a copy of N, this is going to happen. So I have the first one, right? And I want to copy the second one out of it. So I have assignment at the moment of creation or something like that. So what happens, the object, the compiler, builds a new object and blindly copies all the data from the other one into this one, not copying the thing because it's outside of the resource. Therefore, what we call a copy constructor, a one argument constructor that receives the same type to copy is not implemented. Because it's not implemented, the compiler will build one of its own, blindly copying everything. Same thing as assignment happens. A little less bad than that. In an assignment, a copy assignment, we had memory leak too, right? 
In this one, we don't have memory leak because B is brand new. It doesn't have anything. It doesn't need to delete anything. So B is brand new, but still, that's not copied. So when actually it copies everything, it looks like everything is fine and dandy, but they are both actually pointing to the same thing. The first destructor is called deletes the data. The second destructor has nothing to work with or function. So that's why goodbye doesn't even have a Fred Soleil anymore, because its data is deleted by the other one. Because of this, we'll go to rule of three, the third one. If you have a class that has data outside of its resource, you need to create a destructor, you need to create a copy assignment, and you need to create a copy constructor. Copy constructor. So what do we need to have over here? Is to create a one argument constructor, one argument constructor that copies from another object of the same type, a one argument constructor. That one argument constructor does the exact same thing. What it does is this. So the, the, the rules and everything for it is exactly like the other one. But first of all, you don't need to check to see if you're copying of yourself because it's impossible. When you're creating something new, something new is being created. It is impossible to be the same object. So you don't need to check for this. Number two, because it's a brand new object, there is nothing in its data. You don't need to delete anything. It's a constructor. It happens when the object is created. So all you need to do is these two lines. You have to see, measure what, what is the size of the, of the other object and copy. Obviously, this is an easy thing. If A has a safe empty state, you need to check that. Maybe it's null. Maybe there's nothing in it. Okay? So we have to check the, if, like, if safe empty states and all those stuff, stuff applies, we have to check it. Same as here. Like, if A has a safe empty state, which is null, do we have a null thingy? If it's null, we don't do anything, do we? What do we do in a constructor? So in a constructor, we're saying if the value is this, so, oh, so it remains null. So I, ha I do have a safe empty state. Because I do, I have to say if this is not equal to A and uh, A dot M value, just to remind you, is not equal to null PTR. I could have just written like that, OK? Do it like this. So now I'm going to bring this delete out to make sure that everything is done. And because, make sure that it's deleted. Because if this is in an invalid safe empty state, I have to be in an invalid safe empty state too. So the safe way is to first put myself in an invalid empty state and then check everything. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to say m value is null PTR. So first putting this object into a safe state, empty state. And now, if the other one is valid, do the copying. If the other one is not valid, I remain in a safe, empty state. No harm done. That's that one. For the top one, because it's a constructor, and I have the default value set in here to be null, I don't need to worry about anything. The only thing I need to do is to say if a dot m value exists, do the copying. Exactly like a regular string copy that you do. And you see that all these logics are the same. Because of that, it's a good idea to have these things in a private method and reuse them. We could do that. I'm not going to do it now. We just want to see the logic. So essentially, what you just saw is the whole juice of classes with resources. Any class with resource you have, when you are due, you have to, it's a, it's a must, you have to apply rule of three, which is destructor, copy assignment, copy constructor. When we go to OP345, it becomes rule of five. But now it's rule of three, OK? 
if there are more things that you need to do, what you're going to learn later. This is too rich for our blood at the moment. So destructor, copy constructor, copy assignment. These three things uh, has to be implemented, and we have a safe class. Any questions? All these things make sense when I'm talking about it. If you don't go home and do it immediately, it's going to go pew, evaporate in three seconds. Okay? So what I want you to do when you go home, read this and understand what it, how it works. Set it aside. Don't look at it. Write it yourself. Test it. See if it works. If it failed, then compare the code with mine. Okay? Actually, don't compare. Put the code away. Read mine again. Then put yourself, look at yours, try to debug it. But I said compare it, big mistake, never compare. Always try to read one, set it aside, look at the other one. If you compare, you're not going to learn. Okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's walk through. Let's say A, I'll tell you how, why, easy. So, so first of all, let me run this, make sure it works. It's not going to crash anymore. Okay. So that's, I'm going to, I'm going to call this, I'm, I'm going to come to your, uh, to your answer in a second, right? In here, I'm going to say zero 02 needs copy constructor. Okay. So Peter, take a look at this. Okay? When this program runs, oh, sorry. I forgot. Oh, not here, not here, not here. Bad boy I am. Bad boy I am. I am a bad, bad boy. Here. Okay. Let's run it again. So now I have an empty name, right? When it comes over here, value is null PTR. Because it's null pointer, nothing happens. Empty literally has an M value that is null, correct? Now, Fred is Fred. We know how it works. Now I'm going to come try to copy empty into Fred. When I come over here, it first deletes the value of mine that is Fred, right? But when it deletes it, now it's going to point to garbage. So I have to follow the rule. After deleting, I always have to have the unused pointer set to be null. So I do that. Now mine is null, right? Now it's going to see, is my address, is my address that is C98 the same as of the address of A that is C78? No, they are not. Is this thing null? Yes. Because it's null, this if statement is not going to happen. I cannot copy a null, right? So when it skips, my object remains in a safe empty state. If I didn't have that one, if that one was an if statement, my object would not be set. Either it would keep the old value that was Fred, which is wrong, because if I'm setting an object to an empty object, my object has to become empty. Or it would have, if I only had the null inside, then it would delete and not keep it null. Segmentation fault. So we have to leave it outside. We could have put this one in an else statement. No, we can't because we have to delete it. No, this is perfect. That's how it's supposed to be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If it's the ref, no, it actually reference of the same thing. Yeah, it will actually wipe it out then. Oh, you're right. You're right. So you're right. He says, he says, he says, will this, 
fix if I set it to the reference of the same thing? No, it won't. Thank you. 2% for the test. That was an amazing thing to say. So if I actually do something like that, when I, if I don't put this one over, if I put it over here and it's a self-copying by mistake, the self-copying will cause the wipeout of the, of the object. So we have to take that out. So it has to be two if statements. This has to come here. And we have to have an if here. Now it's safe. Now it's safe for everything. OK? But of course, as this was a perfect example to show you, it doesn't matter how many times you have programmed and did dynamic memory allocation, 20 years, 30 years, when you're on the spot and you're in short of time and you are doing something quickly, you will make a mistake. I would have done this perfectly. I would be happy. Run it. And I thought, oh, I know C++. And then somebody comes and tells you you did wrong. So careful, OK? Always go through it again and again and again. All right? Yeah. So that's that. So if they are the same, nothing happens. If they are not the same, first it wipes the other one out, then attempts to copy. So yeah, beautiful. All right. And now take a look. You see this? This is actually not equal to null PTR. You know that, right? You see this one? And you see this one? Identical, correct? You see this one? You see this one? Identical, correct? So, so what I would do to make this perfect is first split the window so we can see them both. So what I would do in here, I, in the private part, I will create something like, 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 like character pointer allocate and copy constant character pointer val value okay so let me create that so what my allocate and copy will do is this i'm going to bring it where is my allocate and copy allocate and copy allocate there you go i'm going to bring it right up here so allocate and copy, we'll do this. Take a look. So instead of a value, so that, that's m value. Or I don't even need to do that. I'm going to put over here void. So that's value. If value is not equal to null, value is. So that's m value being equal to value. And this one is going to be void. So now, as you see, it's going to get a value. If it's not null, it's going to do all the copying and stuff and put everything in here. So in here, I'm just going to say, Allocate and copy a dot m value and do the same thing over here. Right? Okay? So let me do this. I'm going to copy everything okay and copy everything in here copy and don't cut don't save so now we have this as it was before I'm gonna bring this over here I'm gonna say if this is not equal to address of A. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. 
So this is the correct one. So this is what we had before function, right? I'm going to save it. Okay. And save it. Now I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to say over here, commit. Before creating, allocate, and copy. And wait, 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 wait. I think one more thing I need to do name.h. I'm going to remove this. Save. There you go. So it's going to be before creating allocate and copy. I'm going to commit it. Okay, one more time. Yes. So what I did over here, commit again. What's going on? Oh, because it has I have PowerPoint thingy. Give me a second. Abort. My my PowerPoint is open. It locks the file. And it's causing it like that. One more time. Before allocate and copy, please. All right. Commit and push. All right. So now it went up. Pull. Okay and push what i did i created the commit point so you can actually go to logs and compare the two and see exactly what was made different when i actually created the allocate and copy so that's that one and that's with allocate and copy so i'll save this one save all right so you know now all right, so that's with the function, and that's the whole thing about classes with resources. This process happens for many different things, and I'm going to give you many examples. I'll be going, we're going to create a dynamic array, and we're going to create lots of good stuff going through all these things. Uh, any questions? Yes. Uh, okay, so because of the Thanksgiving thing, I did not put the quizzes up. I want people to have fun with Thanksgiving and stuff. Don't worry. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna open the quizzes tomorrow. Leave it open for four days, and I'm gonna. So to, you did total of one or two quizzes, one, because the other class did two. But anyways, so you're gonna have four quizzes in four days. You can do it in any sequence if you want. Okay. Take. You have to study for the midterm anyway. Okay. So it's next next week. Yeah, the last week before the fight, before the before the thing we mentioned it right. It's in your uh, addendum. It's the the midterm is last week before the study break. It's going to be during your lab. Yes. Pardon me. It's open. You can use anything you want. It doesn't matter. You can use internet, book, whatever you want. A one hour and thirty minutes. In class, yes. Okay, it's going to return null. It's going to return zero, null. So your new returns zero. Later on in OP345, you learn that there's a second way called exception handling. With exception handling, it throws an exception called not enough memory. It's going to, it's a child of expansion, but for now, it just returns null. You can check the value. It's rarely going to happen these days. Not enough memory. <laughs> if, it was, if it was 20 years ago, we would actually write an if statement for every single part, because that would happen. But now, your cell phones has 8 gigs of RAM, so <laughs> it's not going to, especially with our programs, it won't fail. But yeah, so any time you have new, if new fails, it returns null. That, that's why we follow the standard of keeping something null. Yes. Uh, 
yeah, new, new operator, it tries to find allocated memory. If the memory is alloc if, if it can allocate it, fine. For any reason it can't, it returns null. And that's standard with everything, OK? Anything that returns any type of pointer, you should do the same thing. If something goes wrong, you set it to null, right? Same, uh, same thing with, uh, with, uh, with new. Questions? Suggestions? Objections? One more thing I wanted to write over here, and I want your attention on this. You want to you wanna have a break before we continue? What's the time? We have like 25, we, we end at 125, right? So we have, we have like uh, approximately 30 minutes if we have a five minutes break. Five minutes break is okay. Please remind me to resume recording. Let's say I want to, I'm not happy with the way, like, like, like coming from C, if we want to write some kind of a class to take care of reading and writing for us. So, or, or just writing. Let's, let's write, write a class. So I'm just going to take this name thing out of here. I'm going to create a class. I'm going to call it output. OK? And in here, I'm going to use, so I'm coming from C, C, S, T, V, I, O. I'm coming from C, and I don't have C in C out. I want to create a class that does output for me. OK? Because I'm sick and tired of printf and all the things that printf is doing. I want to write something comfy and nice to my, for myself. So what I do, this class output of mine, for now it doesn't have anything other than printing stuff. So in here I'm going to create something like void print. And because I know it does overloading, I'm going to say int val. And in here I'm going to say printf percent %d and val, right? And that prints. So I don't need to use printf and formatting. I'm just going to say print and int, and it's going to print it, right? And if I want to print a double value, I simply say double val, right? And I'm going to say printf. How do you printf a, a double value? LF? OK. Percent LF. Yeah, let's put, uh, uh, I think, point, uh, point 0.2. So I'll do something like that, LF. And I'm going to print value, right? Not printf, print. Printf, yeah. Print. OK? And then I'm going to have another one, print. And I'm going to have a constant character pointer in here, val. And in here, I'm going to say printf val. Right? So there you go. So, I've, so, I'm, I, so let's say my, I'm printing integer. I'm printing doubles. And I, um, and I am uh, printing a character. Right? So if I want to print something with this, if I have Let's say over here something like int val. Let me just make something, make it ready over here so I can do it quick, 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 quick. Name, name, name. Uh, so we are on here, October 11. Yeah. So in here, I'm going to go print val. And uh, this print val thingy, I'm going to uh, uh, integer, say, age 35. Uh, and I'm going to have double salary, say, one, two, three, four, five, six, point yada, yada. Um, OK, so in here, I can now say print. So I can create uh, an instance of output. So I'm going to say output, um, like far dot out, OK? And I can say over here, f dot f out dot print. Uh, Hello, I am uh, a programmer, and uh, I am. And in here, I'm going to say, I am, f out, print again. This time, I'm going to say age. And I'm going to say over here, f out, the print again. Oh, god, this is boring. Um, years old, old, and I make. f out dot print salary f out dot print uh, 
dollars a year. And I go to new line. Okay? So I can run this program. When I run this program, obviously it's going to run and execute and print that uh, silly message. So it's going to say, hello, I'm a programmer. I'm 35 years old and I make this much money a year. A year. Okay? But that's awful. I don't like it. Because like, I have to write 50 lines of code to print. Printf was easier than this. I just remember that I said something about cascading and returning the reference of the current object. So instead of void in here, so in here I'm going to, let me just commit this, commit, and I'm going to say bad output. Okay, so that's that. Okay, then Now I'm going to say, OK, in here I'm going to return the reference of output and see what happened. So I'm going to say output reference and obviously return this over here. So instead of void, I'm going to return the reference of output. And for each one of the functions, I'm going to return this. OK? I just gave you a story that we are, have, we are coming from C and we don't know O stream. OK, that's the default of the system. <laughs> you're, you're, you're just killing all the buzz that I'm trying to create. But anyways, so now that I have done this, instead of this f out print, because this f out is returning this, I don't need to keep saying f out, f out. I can come back over here, say dot print age, and I can come bring it back over here, say dot print age. Something right and dot print and dot print right. So it's better, but still I'm doing lots of print right. Still it's doing the same thing. When I run it, it runs and compiles and prints the same thing. How did it work? Because it's a cascading thing. I'm saying this one prints f out. That again, this one prints f out, and it keeps going like that. Correct? Okay. Now that I have done this, I remembered. Uh, let me just put this thing over here. I'm going to call it commit, and I'm going to say better output. So now that I have done this, I'm going to say, wait a minute. I just remembered that I could overload operators. So why don't I, instead of print, say operator left shift? If I do that, then all I need to do is to say left shift. Oh, I hate this automatic thingy in left shift. Left shift. Left shift. Left shift. Left shift and left shift. Does not that look familiar to you? So C out is just a class with few operator overloads in it. Of course, it has lots of bells and whistles, and they did something to show. But it starts here. Now you have properties for width, so you can set width. So the next printout is with certain width. It has a flag for left justification. So the next printout is going to be left justified in that width. So it does all the stuff in a class. All these things that you create, and it works exactly like C out. If you run it, it works the exact same way. So no difference, right? So this is what we call it how C out works. Right? So coming from there, we know for every single thing that we need to print, C out needs to overload an operator for us. Because we don't have access to C out, we cannot write these operators, hence creating helpers. 
because of this fact, so this one, I'm going to say how C out works. This one's going to be 0, 3, how C out works, dot CPP. So because we cannot add individual stuff to C out, if I want my name to get printed with C out, what I need to do is to first write something for the name. So let me just bring this over here, include IO stream and using namespace std, using namespace stds, and we're going to have, I want to have over here name, and oh, and I need name, include name.h. Now in here, I'm going to say n is equal to Homer Simpson. Okay, now I want to say n said do. And this cannot happen because C out doesn't have an operator designed. C out doesn't have an operator designed to print my n. Because of that, I need to create a helper. And the helper signature is exactly like C out, which means it has to get a C out at left, get a name at right, and return a C out so the next message can get printed. So again, just to emphasize on what we need to create, it needs to, it needs to return. So first of all, it is operator left shift. We call it insertion operator. It needs an O stream at left. It needs a name at right. And it needs to return another O stream so the rest can get printed. STD, of course. STD. So all I need to do is to develop some way for the name to get printed in here, and I'm good and done. Why is it giving me 50 errors? Oh, because I don't have a semicolon here. So I create the code for this as such. So what I need to do in here, save. What I need to do over here is to create that function as follows. It's a standalone helper function, but this helper function of mine simply calls the display I created, and because I followed the instructions of my, of my prof, and my prof said, make the signature of your display like this, later you'll understand. Okay, that's why your displays should receive an O stream and return an O stream so, so it can sit in the middle of this function running. So what you do, you're saying the right one that is a name. Oh, didn't I did not. I am a very bad person because I did not make my display constant. Very bad person. Names, uh, queries are usually constant. Okay, so that's a const. Okay, so I'm going to say write dot display, and display is receiving C out reference, and that's the left operand over here that I have left. And the return is an O stream, so I can simply return it. Ladies and gentlemen, this type of overload is universal in. Uh, overloading O stream, which means you create a display that receives an O stream, returns an O stream. You overload the helper, left side receives an O stream, right side your object. You call the object's display passing the O stream and returning, and your object is now printable with O stream or even readable with I stream. Same thing, no difference. So now, now my name, as you see, can get printed with C out like any other object. And when I run the program, you will see that it goes to the helper. Right becomes the, the name that I want to print. As you see, it's Homer Simpson. It goes to the display of Homer Simpson, prints Homer Simpson, and returns C out reference. So now C out reference will print, say, do. 
and it's going to print though. You should be old to see, I don't know, I don't think young people watch Simpsons anymore, but no is what usually he says. Anyway, so that's that. So now name is printed. Yes. Because it doesn't have, we just met, we just, because it doesn't have a function that accepts a name. Name, we built it. It doesn't have an operator overloaded that accepts a name. It just has int. It just has the primitive values. C out only prints primitive values, string, and I think that's it. Rest of the stuff you have to design. It doesn't have it. Unless you want to hack the compiler and go add a function to see how to all stream, which you do, should not do. But yeah, that's how it is. Are we OK? No, you have, to, you have to code it yourself. You have to code it yourself. There is no other way. And if I want to get it myself, let's say, um, how big a name can be? Uh, a name cannot be more than a thousand characters, can it? No, right? So no, you're shaking your head. Like, do we have anybody more than a thousand characters? I don't know. I actually Googled the longest name. It's in one of your workshops. Have you seen that name? That I actually Googled what is the longest name in the world, and Google actually gave it to me. And I brought Babylon in. And that, that's why I made it 70 characters max. Okay, so we'll make it 128. It's not going to be more than that. So I'm going to create a read function for my name the exact same way. So in here, I'm going to say std iStream reference read std. See, I'm copying the top iStream reference c in ref that by default gets c in and it is not constant because I'm supposed to change the thing, right? So now I'm doing the read and in my read, so now I'm creating the read and in my read, if I can find it, in my read, the very first thing I need to do is to wipe out the memory, not to have memory leak, right? So the very first thing I'm going to do is delete m value, and m value is set to null PTR. And I'm going to create a local variable. I'm going to say character local 128. Now I'm going to use get line to receive the name up to that number. So I'm going to say c in ref dot get line into local, get line into local up to 128 characters. Now I'm going to say if c in dot ref, if c in ref did not fail, now I'm going to say, Oh, I think I have something for it. Allocate and copy. Local. Correct? Huh? Get line is the first one, is the. This one? This is just a read function. Okay, and return C in ref. Did I reuse my function properly? Let's take a look at the function. The allocate gets the local value. If it's not null, it does size and copy, so everything is done. So now I read it. So this one reads uh, a name dynamically and puts it in there. Do I want it to be read with C in? Yes. To do that, it's exactly the same thing, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to copy and paste this one. In here, I'm going to say iStream, std iStream, and name is not constant. It's a reference, but it's not, so I'm going to say write, and in here, I'm going to say read. Done. And now I can read it with C in. Obviously, I need to put this over here. 
or I can just copy this. So copy, paste, again, iStream. I forgot to make it right shift. iStream, non-constant, save, and I want to make this one right shift too. There you go. Now in here I can say, instead of writing, instead of uh, uh, actually putting the name, I can put over here N, and I can say, see out, what is your name? And I can go C in N. So now my C in and C out is working with my object as easy as it goes. Yes. Extraction operator? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It extracts from scene, it inserts into C out. Uh, yeah, because C in doesn't have an operator for name. Oh, scene, scene. scene is C in. Yeah, scene is in. And, yeah, and well, what they did is that in. I'll explain that later. But they made C in and C out are instances of O stream and I stream, but they are global variables. Global objects everywhere there. As soon as you include I O stream, it's available everywhere. Okay? Yes. Yes. So we're going to start. So what happens in here? We have two minutes, and that's the walkthrough time. So. It creates a name. We know it's going to be null because nothing is in there. Then it's going to say, what is your name? Then it's going to go to C in. In C in, it's going to call read, passing the C in to read. So this C in reference is the reference of C in. Now it's going to say, delete the M value, but it's null. Doesn't matter. If it wasn't null, it would have deleted it. But it's null. Nothing's going to happen. That's the thing. Delete ignores null. That's why it's safe to set anything that you don't use to null. That's the beauty of it. So it deletes it, sets it to null. Now it says, get up to 128 characters and put it in local. So that one in here, I'm going to say fartad solimanlu and hit enter. Local variable has that one. C in reference didn't fail, which means read was successful. Therefore, it comes in here and allocates to the size of var that Solimanlu puts it in M value, copies it, returns C in, comes out, it says var that Solimanlu said do. Okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? So, okay, so that's that. That's all about classes with resources and C in and C out. And, um, we, t we didn't talk about file read and write. We'll talk about it the next week. Okay? File reading and file writing. You already know what it is. Do you know how to work with C in? Almost, right? It's the same thing. C in reads from keyboard. And. Yeah, it's in my tester. I didn't ask you to write it. It is in my tester. So you've seen I use it. Yeah. Yes. You don't create anything. C in knows how to read from a file. Don't worry. No, nothing. All right.